all boys and girls and my turn to read a story again. The story that I've chosen to read is a story that I have read to you in worship and Mr Dent has already read to you. Um, but it's one of my favourites and I thought that I would read it again. The story that I'm reading today is Wisp, a story of hope by Zana Frallian and Graham Baker Smith. This story is all about a little boy called Idris who one day finds a wisp. Enjoy. Idris lived in a small, small world. A world where fences grew from the dirt and where shadows ruled. A world with no trees to give shade, no rivers to drink or seas to swim. A world full of people, but where everyone was alone. Until one day, a wisp flew in on the evening wind. Dust rose up in swarms around it. Feet trampled it into the dirt. Nobody noticed it. Nobody except Idris. Idris gentled the wisp from the ground. He softly away the dust and dirt and footprints. And that was when he felt it. The smallest whisper of what? The wisp began to wriggle. Flitting and fluttering, it bustled Idris past rows of tents, over the moonlit dirt and along the fences glare, until it stilled at the feet of a man, ancient and cracked. Is this yours? Idris asked. The man's eyes were long ago dulled, but he took the wisp in his hands. He held it to his ear. Slowly, the spark of a smile lit his lips. Once, he whispered. The wisp pulsed bright. The man lifted his voice and music poured into the night. A swelling sea of rememberings twirled on the air and shimmered in the breeze. The people stopped, they smiled, and together they listened to the blazing bright heartbeat of a song. And when the man's voice quietened, there was just the hint of a hum in his step, and a bright in his eyes where the dullness no longer settled. When the next wisp flew in on the evening wind, Idris knew what to do. He let himself be bustled past and over and along until the wisp found who it was seeking. The woman looked at Idris a sad etch deep into her face. She held the wisp to her ear. A light flickered softly in her eyes. Once, she whispered, and the wisp quivered with delight. The memory spun from the woman's fingers and rippled through the air. A forest blossomed from the dirt and pulled free a storm. The people stopped, they smiled, and together, they watched as a thunder of colours rained down from the sky. And when the woman's fingers stilled, there was just a splash of happy in her words. And the sad on her face was not as deep as before. More days passed and more wisps flew in on the evening wind. Wances were whispered and rememberings released. Idris tasted the pull of the moonlight and explored the soft scent of new knowings. He felt the rumbles of the earth and the tremble of stories from a thousand kingdoms. Then one evening, a wisp appeared that did not wriggle or flutter or flit. Instead, it settled at Idris' feet and Idris wondered, was this wisp meant for him? He waited and waited. But no memories appeared. Idris had lived his whole life in this small, small world. There was nothing else to remember. Then Idris held the wisp close. Slowly his ache was calmed and a seed of understanding began to grow deep inside his heart. For Idris's wisp wasn't a memory. It was a promise. Idris felt his feet begin to move and his arms begin to shake. He danced free his promise, sending it shooting from the stars and bright soak in the dirt. The people stopped. 
they smiled, and together they felt the promise of a dream. Idris lifted his hands and let his wisp catch on the wind. He watched it wing higher and higher, flying over the fences to where people had forgotten how to welcome wide field. It splashed in the rivers and danced in the trees. It carried with it the heartbeat of a song and the colours of rain, the scent of new knowings and the tremble of stories from a thousand kingdoms. The promise grew stronger with each person it touched. Soon it whispered, Someday.